Okay, uh, right, I, I'm talking on behalf of uh, Prof. Wang uh, Qinghai, right? Um, and then, to, uh, right, so I'm using his slides, and these are the set of slides that he used for the uh, physics orientation, the freshman orientation. Uh, were you all at the freshman orientation? Some? How, how many of you were at the two, three? Oh, the, just the three of you all. The rest? Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, are you all going to attend the uh, physics freshman welcome lunch on the 7th of August? Okay, so, that, that, okay, so that, that's one department uh, gathering uh, which I think you should uh, attend, right? Because uh, you'll be meeting your, your lecturers and professors, right? Uh, okay. Um, and then, can I have a show of hands? How, how many of you are doing physics as a primary major? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the rest, eh? Oh, only two of you, second major. Ah, huh? only minor in astrophysics. Oh, okay. Then, uh, you. Oh, you, you are first major. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the slides will be addressing basically primary majors, lah. Right, physics as primary major, and then the, if you have questions about uh, minor, maybe you can raise a, along the way. Right, so stop me at any time uh, when you feel that you know it is not clearly explained. Uh, so it's the same set of slides for those who have attended the freshman orientation, uh, right? But uh, it's a different speaker, lah. So and hopefully I can give you a different perspective, right? Uh, okay. So I think uh, this morning were you at the opening, you know, uh, addressed by the uh, dean and then the, my, my vice dean uh, of student life and alumni relations, right? So basically, I think uh, from the student life section, right, I think that the takeaway essentially is that, uh, you know, you have to plan, you know, your four years, right? Uh, I can tell you the, the rationale, right? If you from the first day you were born, of course you, you can't remember the first day you were born, right? Okay, right, but uh, it, it takes you about six years, right, of preparation before you, I mean growing up and pre preparing, right, for primary school, right, and then you spend six years in primary school, right? Okay, and what were you doing in the primary school? You're basically preparing for the pre-university education, right, four years or maybe six years if you are going for, you know, you go through the true train program, but essentially four plus two, right? Another six years of preparation for university education, right? So what do you think your next four years will be, uh, you know, what, what should you do with the next four years? What, what is the, uh, you know, the, like the, the uh, objectives or the, you know, eventually what, what should you aim for? Wow. Hey, your university students, right? Okay, Any, anyway, um, if you have sort of, you know, if you didn't miss what the dean actually said in the morning, right, he, uh, I think he very quickly mentioned that, oh, you should be looking at your next 20 years you know, the university. D do you remember that? He said that, right? I think he doesn't mean 20 years. I think he meant 40 years. <laughs> that is, you know, for the rest of your life, right? Because, uh, you know, if you, if you have been reading the news and so on, you know that it has been going on for a few years already, right, lifelong learning. The government has been saying, you know, a lot lifelong learning, right, about, you know, graduating and then after that you go to industry, right, and then you still come back to the university and you take courses, right, uh, you skill or reskill yourself and so on, okay, right, so, um, so that, that's the model. The CHS model essentially is having that whole thing in mind. That means, you know, it is a curriculum that uh, sort of prepare you for this lifelong learning thing, right? So that is why if you compare with your seniors, right? If you know seniors that were in the non-CHS curriculum, right? You will see that uh, the whole philosophy in the past was quite different. Is that, okay, you spend four years at the university, right? And you try to learn as much as possible, uh, maybe within one major or at most another major or another minor and so on. Right, and then uh, yeah, 
you hopefully that um, that four years spent will allow you to run for the next 40 years. Okay, right? But uh, uh, what really happened is happening right now is that uh, things have become quite different. Okay, the game has changed, right? So, um, yeah, so it is, uh, you know, in, in this, in, in the, in the uh, current industry, right, for example, right, uh, when you go for internship and so on, you will learn that uh, it is more of you working with many other, you know, people from different disciplines, right? So there's no need for you to actually master different disciplines, but it is important for you to be able to work with people from different disciplines, be able to communicate with them effectively, right? Understand, uh, you know, at least uh, minimally, at least able to understand within a group, maybe there are 10 disciplines, okay? That, uh, you know, people coming from 10 different disciplines solving one problem, right? And you are at least able to communicate effectively with two or three other disciplines, you know, people from two or three other disciplines, right? So that, that's the, so the whole idea is quite, quite different today. Right, so you can see here why, um, yeah, under a CHS a curriculum, you have to do common curriculum, right, which I will not go into details, right, and then uh, the major sort of compact with your seniors, right, uh, for the non-CHS ones, uh, you are still able to meet them. Uh, for the physics, uh, yeah, your physics seniors, the last batch this year is uh, in their fourth year, right, so you, if you talk to them and you compare, with what they have been doing, uh, 15 courses is like 10 courses less than what they were doing, right? And then uh, under UE, uh, you have 12, okay? So for physics, uh, you have to do 15 courses, right? So that will satisfy the first major requirement. Uh, but uh, for physics also, you have to take note, right? Uh, that you have to either do a final year project, right? Or you have to do an internship related to physics. Okay, right. So I don't know whether uh, Professor Wang Qinghai did he mention to you all that if you want to do internship, uh, you have to take note, right? Because internship is like applying for a job. In other words, it's not that you know, like you want to do an internship, you will be given an internship. You have to go through the proper interview. You know, apply for the for the internship. Go through the interview. The company must want you, right? Then you can do the internship. Otherwise. Uh, it will be like, okay, I, I, I know this is, this is not politically correct, okay, right, but it will be like no choice. You have to do the final year project. You get what I'm trying to say? Right? And to improve your chances of getting an internship that, you know, can satisfy this requirement, right, uh, usually you, you, wouldn't, you shouldn't be aiming for one internship. In other words, you should be, uh, you know, aiming for uh, at least two, okay, right? So one to begin with, right? That maybe you can use it as a springboard into an internship that, uh, you know, you look forward to and an internship that uh, can satisfy the physics requirement. You all understand what I'm trying to say? Right? B because like your dream internship, right, could be very competitive, okay? Right? And then uh, you... Your first internship, maybe you want to go for a less competitive one, right? And then use that as sort of evidence for your interest and your, you know, strength or whatever, okay? Right? To propel yourself into the, your so-called dream internship. So you have to strategize, okay? you have to plan, okay? Yeah? Right? So, uh, yes, if you are, okay, I, th I don't think anyone here is going for second major, right? And, and minor. So for astrophysics minor, five causes, uh. so... I think by now, after he, you know, listening to the uh, morning talks, right, you know that uh, going, you know, satisfying what uh, uh, you know, major requirements and so on is what you, I mean, satisfying requirements is what you need to do, uh, right? Okay, and if you are going for double degree, then you know you can see here that uh, then you have to look at both uh, the degree, uh, the major requirements and the two degree, you know, requirements and so on. Okay, right. So for physics, well. Uh, the first ma primary major requirement, uh, one compulsory level one course. Uh, have you all spoken to your CHS seniors already about this gateway module? Okay, I, I, okay so, so maybe I, uh, I, I, okay, I also know that there were 
quite a few, com not quite a few, actually many complaints about this uh, first course, right? Uh, so let, let, me, let me give you an idea, okay, what this, two co this course is like, okay? Um, in Cambridge University, Cavendish Lab, right? So it, they call it the physics department Cavendish Lab for some reasons. Uh, a course similar to this is offered in the final year. Okay, because the idea is that, right, uh, by when students reach the final year, they will be mature enough to appreciate the philosophy of physics across the whole breadth of physics. Okay, right. So, uh, so that that that's the idea in Cambridge. In Yale, right, not Yale and US, uh, but in Yale itself, okay, they have a similar uh, level one thousand module. Okay, similar to this. Okay. Right, uh, so it's offered in first year, okay, right, and the idea is also you know they talk about philosophy and then they talk about you know the the uh, spread of physics throughout the whole you know yeah, right. So the idea is basically to give the students a buffet right of this uh, physics topics, right, and then uh, you can sort of uh, you know gain the knowledge of what physics is about, right, get yourself interested, and then to get some idea like, okay, you know, maybe, uh, yeah, you know, I'm really interested in astrophysics, or I'm interested in quantum mechanics, or, you know, things like that, yeah, right, so this course is, is for that purpose, yeah, right, so take it with the correct uh, attitude, la, right, then I think you will enjoy it, okay, yeah, right, so it, it is not a course that fills in, you know, all the prerequisite, uh, uh, math, mathematics la, or physics, yeah. So you, you, if you, if you go in with the idea that, oh, I want to come here and learn something that I can use in the other courses, uh, maybe not the technical details, but the ideas, okay, right? So uh, be very clear about what to take away from the course, la, right? Then I think you should enjoy it, okay? Uh, then six other compulsory level 2000 modules, um, the order of which right to take first and so on. Um, just now during the student life alumni section, right, uh, the vice dean uh, Prof Chung, right, he he actually shared that some departments have this mentorship program. Okay, uh, physics department has a mentorship program. Okay, the I just now I said that you know uh, the seventh of August there will be a tea, uh, sort of lunch right organized by the physics society. Right, you should attend that one because all your mentors will be there. Okay, so that will be the, the, the you know during the lunch there will be a launch of the mentorship program and then also you will you will, that will be the first time you will be meeting up with your mentors. So what what do the mentors do? One job is actually to guide you through this CHS, uh, yeah, you know this CHS. Uh, CHS is quite complicated, right? You, you, you know, re remember the, you have the choices, right? But uh, the, the problem with choices and many choices is that, uh, you know, which one should come first and so on, right? So, so one of the jobs of the mentor is to give you advice on, you know, uh, based on your interest and your, you know, what, what you aim to do with the, 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 the cause, this physics uh, major, right? Uh, they will advise you accordingly, okay? Yeah, so, uh, so I'll just list down this six. Uh, I think usually most people advise you know you uh, the students to actually take the math methods in physics first, right? Uh, yeah, then maybe together with classical mechanics, or you can take it over, uh, you know, at a, at a more relaxed pace, right? If you are going for a second minor or second major, right? Then maybe you want to spread out the, the mo these modules, okay? Because uh, fifteen modules. The whole idea is actually to give you the the time and space, right, to actually be able to do uh, a double major or major minor. Okay, that's the whole idea. Okay, right. So, uh, so far, any question? All right. If not, uh, yeah. So that that is the seven. Why are you here? I yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, so other than the seven compulsory modules, right, you have. A choice of uh, from this list, right? Uh, Thirty-two units means uh, eight modules. So you just choose any of the eight. Yeah. So don't anyhow choose lah, right? So you can see here 
that, uh, for example, if after the gateway module, the first module, right, the level 1000 module, you feel like, okay, I think uh, um, I'm interested in computational aspects of physics, right? Then you may want to choose like computational methods in physics, machine learning in, for physicists, right? Uh, maybe you, 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 know, you also learn a little bit about like condensed matter physics and you feel, okay, you, know, you may want to choose this computational condensed matter physics, right? Or maybe you want to do a undergraduate research projects concerning computation, right? So that, that's one aspect, okay? Physics is uh, very rich, huh? yeah? Okay, then maybe you, you, know, you got interested in uh, um, experimental physics, right? So if you look at here, there's only one compulsory experimental you know, course to take, yeah? So you may be a bit disappointed. So where, where, where should you go for lab then? Either you choose this one, Experimental Physics 2, uh, which is pretty much like the, this one, right? That means you, you go into the lab, you have the setup sitting on the table, and then you mess around with it, okay? Yeah, but uh, if this is, you know, uh, not sufficient, or you feel that, okay, I want more, right? Then where should you go? You go and talk to the, you know, the, the principal investigators. You talk to the profs, right, or your mentors, uh, academic mentors, Right, to find out who is doing what in which lab, right, the research labs. Yeah. So you will go straight to the research labs, right, where there will be uh, post postdocs or graduate students, you know, guiding you right through the uh, those experiments. I isn't that more exciting? Okay. Right. So that that's one. Uh, but uh, if you are interested in theoretical physics, so who is, uh, you know, aiming or aiming to become Einstein? No one wants to be Einstein. So, so, so nobody is interested in theoretical physics? You want to put out your hand, is it? <laughs> you dare not. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, if you are interested in theoretical physics, of course, there are many theoretical modules to, to choose from here. Right? But then, of course, uh, there, there's a decision that you have to make about, you know, maybe you want to focus on quantum, right? quantum mechanics, quantum information theory, quantum computers, right? Uh, then you have to choose a list from here, right? Or maybe like some of your seniors, they are interested in going to CERN to do a PhD, right? CERN, the particle accelerator, right? Then you may choose some, you know, like uh, nuclear particle physics, right? Particle physics and so on, right? So, okay, so come for the launch of the uh, mentorship program. That's when you will meet your mentor. Your mentor may not be working in the area that you're interested in, but he or she definitely will be able to connect you with you know, people who are working in the areas that you're interested in. Okay, yeah, so remember this. Huh? So what's the date? 7th August, yeah, okay. So, uh, right, then, so remember just now I said, Right, plus this, okay? So this is part of the requirement, okay? Either you do a final year project, honors project in physics, which carries eight units, right? Or a UPIP internship, yeah. But I, as I already said just now, okay? Internship is like a job application. You don't, you, you cannot say, okay, uh, I don't do anything, right? Until year four, then, okay, suddenly I decide, oh, maybe, you know, research is not for me, I want to, uh, you know, increase my chances of, improve my chances of getting a dream job, right? Then I apply for internship. Uh, it may be too late because uh, if you don't have previous internship experiences and then you compete with all those who actually had because under CHS curriculum, right, a lot of people are going for internship, you know, yeah, experiential learning. If you don't, it will be quite challenging, okay? For you to, in the last minute, decide, okay, I want to take an uh, internship to fulfill this requirement. Yeah? Right? So, uh, remember this. Huh? Okay, then, uh, yeah, so if you are first primary major in physics, uh, you may declare either one of these uh, specializations. Okay? Right? In astrophysics, or in nanophysics, or in quantum technologies. So this is what I mentioned just now, you know, if you have like sort of like uh, 
right now, okay, you are interested, you know what you are interested in, you can do this. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think you can visit the web page, right? The only thing that I feel may be confusing is this note here, which you will find under the web page uh, for astrophysics, nanophysics, and quantum technologies. In fact, all the three specializations. Do you know what this means? Only up to eight units can be double counted with major requirements. Quiet means what? You are not confused by this, uh? Are you confused or not? You are not confused. Okay. The implication, uh, implication, right, is this. Uh, remember, physics requ major requirement, 15 modules, okay, right? So if you want a specialization to be printed on your certificate, right, then that means that you have to do more physics modules. Right here, right, you need to do five, right? Only two modules can be counted towards satisfying physics major requirement. So you have to do three modules, uh, I mean three modules that you will go under unrestricted electives. Get it? So let me put it the other way, right? It means that if for someone who is not going to declare specialization in astrophysics, you can do all these modules, okay? And it satisfies your physics major requirement. Get it? Right? So if you want specialization to be printed on your certificate, that means that you have to do more than 15 physics modules. Yeah? Okay? Yeah. Right. And then, of course, uh, for physics primary majors, right, you can also choose to do a second minor right, within physics. Right? So the choices are biophysics. Right? So you can see, you know, as I said just now, everything is about satisfying requirement. Uh, right? So you go to the various web page, right? Uh, which you can find, okay, All right, uh, and uh, you can see the, the, the details, uh, okay, medical physics, minor, right, and the latest, okay, meteorology and climate science, minor, okay, yep, minor in nano science, okay, right, um, yeah, so, just now, right, during the uh, uh, Student Life Alumni Relations talk, right, uh, same, same thing, right, it was mentioned that you should not just be focusing on study, 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 right, so you should be, uh, you know, looking a, a, a little bit about uh, uh, making friends, building your network, right, and, and so on, okay, right, so, uh, uh, so, so among those, right, uh, something that's, those activities are, uh, Something that's more academic will be maybe doing an undergraduate research project, right? Or, yeah, or an internship, okay? Uh, just now I said say already, uh, no need to say again, uh, right? If you want to do internship to satisfy your physics requirement, you better plan properly, yeah? Right, so here, uh, if you do Europe, okay, uh, you can, okay, I don't know how come there's a maximum of two Europe's, uh, but I think, I think you, yeah. Right, so eight units, but only four units can be counted towards the uh, physics major requirement. Right, the additional four units uh, will be go will go under unrestricted electives. Right, and then can be done during a semester. Okay, so this these are details. Okay, right, you pick. Right, so this is uh, a credit bearing internship. Okay, uh, so here, okay, uh, comp I, I mean this this is a. Uh, a sort of like publish uh, pointer. Uh, if you go during a semester, usually you can't take courses. Okay, uh, you are staring at the person who is in charge of the this program. You peep, right? So, um, so I will just secretly tell you. Okay, um, you can take courses. Okay, yeah. Just uh, okay. So we we it will go through me, right? And then so as long as it is reasonable. Your course coordinator, right, is willing to let you take courses. Your supervisor in your company, right, uh, he or she agrees that okay, you can go to the evening classes and so on, okay, right, uh, and or he he or she is able to give you excuse, right, uh, even during work hours to come and attend lectures, right. So if all these are arranged, it can be done, okay. 
So don't, don't you know don't, don't be discouraged by this. You know, say oh cannot take causes. Then uh, yeah, okay. Yep. Ah, uh, oops. Wow, the computer knows I'm running out of time. Okay. B Victor just not eat my time. Ah, uh. so I I eat your time. <laughs> then you eat his time. Ah, uh. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, very soon, very soon. Okay, so um, so that that's so 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 far the curriculum part, uh, right? Then the the study plan. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I go to the study plan, there are actually other other possibilities. Okay, right? Like uh, design your own uh, module should be design your own course. Uh, okay, right? So do you know what this is? The the name is not self-explanatory. Eh? That means you design your own course. Okay, as so you can individually you can go for like courses that you can find on MOOCs, right? So of course it has to be approved, lah, right? You all know what is MOOCs? Oh, like like you know, uh, what's MOOCs? Ah? like Coursera, edX. Yeah, I know it's DYDOC. Yeah, I I just said right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So so like like if you find a course that is offered by Stanford University. Right, that uh, you cannot find in NUS, right? And you're interested in doing it, you can ask, you know, yeah, you can check with people, okay? Ask your, ask your um, mentor, lah, okay? Right, who to go to, okay, for approval. Then it can be counted, okay? Now, you, you can also form a group of, uh, well, bigger than or equal to 10, lah. okay? Find, find your friends, okay, right, who are willing to jump. You know, together with you, right? Let's say into quantum field theory or strings, right? Uh, because last year there was a group who actually did string theory, okay? Right? With our only string theories in the department, okay? Yeah? So you can do this. Uh, Europe's, okay, I've mentioned, or even unofficial research projects, okay? Right? So then, of course, this will not have any credits, uh, okay? Yeah, so it's for those who die hard, uh, don't care, okay? Right, or overseas exchange programs. Okay? Right. So for study plan, I, I think I've just said the most important thing. You should see your mentor, okay, from the department, and then uh, you can individually plan, right? Like what according to what you, your your needs are. Get it? Right? So seventh August. This is one. Uh, okay. Uh, usually our advice is Students to actually take it slowly, uh, because you you have the, you know this CHS curriculum has that uh, you know uh, feature right that allows you to spread your courses a little bit. Okay, yeah. Yep, yeah, I'm done. I think I don't think the rest is very important. Uh, uh maybe accept. Except what? About feedback. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's so complicated. Uh. Feedback mechanisms, very simple. Just tell your lecturer directly on the face. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. It, it, it's, you, you are looking at another human being, right? Just tell him or her, I'm not understanding what you're saying, right? Yeah. Rather than uh, quietly, you know, leave the lecture theater and then disappear. Yeah. Okay. Right, I think uh, yeah, I'll stop here. Uh, any any burning question? Just one? No, nope. not even one. Eh. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening. Okay.